Shalom. Today we are continuing our study of the correlation of the constellations of the sky with the months, the Hebrew, different Hebrew months. Referring to Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So everything that is in the sky relates to something that the Father wanted us to know about our life. The, the moon and the stars and the sun are for appointed times and seasons. And the constellations each relate to the month in which they're uh, associated with. Today we're going to talk about the eighth month, which in modern Hebrew is called Cheshvan. Uh, in an older form it's called Mar Cheshvan. And some people say that this is uh, a result, the, the mar means bitter, and that Cheshvan is a month which has no celebrations and no holidays in it. It is believed that uh, through the process of metathesis, where letters might change places within a word, that this just really means the eighth month. You can see the uh, resh and the chet, related to the word Yareach, which means moon. You can see the Shin and the Mem and the Nun, which uh, is the root for Shmona, which means eighth. Neither of these forms, Cheshvan or Macheshvan, actually appear in, the, in Tanakh. The word for the eighth month, which appears in Tanakh, is Bul. 1 Kings 6.38, and in the eleventh year, in the month of Bul, which is the eighth month, was a house finished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all the fashion of it. So he was seven years in building it. Speaking of Solomon building a temple, it actually took him seven years and seven months to build it. And even though it was finished in the eighth month, we don't see the dedication until the next year in the seventh month, in the month of Tishrei, at the time of Sukkot, that Solomon dedicated this temple. But the building was completed in the eighth month. Now this word bull has an, another meaning which is kind of interesting in Isaiah 44 19. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? So Isaiah is talking about people that are carving idols. Part of the tree they carve into an idol, and the other part of it they burn the fire to roast their food or to keep themselves warm. And he's saying this is very ironic. A part of the part of the tree you're worshiping, and part of the tree you're just using to cook your food for a daily need. How can you fall down and worship this part, which is uh, translated here as stock, uh, but the word is bull. Now we have an English word, which is bowl, B-O-L-E, which refers exactly to this part of the tree. So that is a cognate. It comes from the root yaval, yud beit lamed, which means to bring or to flow along to carry along. Psalm 68, 29. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Hosea 12, 1. Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. So we can understand that the trunk, this part of the tree, carries the nutrients. They flow up to the leaves uh, for the tree. So this is the idea of Yaval, to carry along. Related to the word Mabul, which means flood. Genesis 6, 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Psalm 29:10 Yahweh sitteth upon the flood yea Yahweh sitteth king forever So some other things which have happened in the 8th month 
uh, 1 Kings 12.32, And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So Jeroboam is ordaining a, a false system of worship, and he picks the 15th day of the 8th month to parallel the 15th day of the 7th month, which is the beginning of Tabernacles Sukkot. So this is a false worship. In Zechariah 1.1, 1, 1, in the 8th month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahweh unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, and it's worth it, we're going to look at the whole prophecy here. Yahweh hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith Yahweh of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith Yahweh. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did not did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as Yahweh of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. So, so far we have seen the uh, finishing of the temple, but a time period of waiting for uh, its dedication. We have seen a, a false worship system set up by Jeroboam, and we have seen now a prophecy, uh, Zechariah calling to the people to return to Yahweh, to be obedient to him. Now, another thing that happened in the eighth month, and we talked about this in the last series. In Exodus, uh, the Father gives Moses the uh, month of what is called Nisan, the month of Passover, the month of Aviv, to be the first month. But it is thought that before that time, that actually the month which is currently the seventh month, the month called Tishrei, the month of trumpets and Sukkot, that that was the first month. So if you count that as the first month, then you will find that the second month of the new calendar is really the eighth month. And the rabbis believe that this is true about the flood, that it took place in this month of uh, Cheshvan, the month of Bul, which is now called the eighth month. Genesis 7.11 in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in, according to the, to the current, the new numbering, but according to the old numbering, the eighth month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And in Genesis 8.14, and in the second month, on the 7th and 20th day of the month, was the earth dried. So we have the beginning of the flood, and the end of the flood taking place in this month, the month that we're talking about right now as the eighth month. So the rabbis have a way of thinking about the end of the previous month, the seventh month, the month of Tishrei, that uh, they associated with the verse and Yaakov went on his way, meaning that now is the time to take all the light that we have accumulated during the, the previous month holidays and bring it into the world, into our regular, ordinary life. And that begins with this eighth month, the month of uh, Cheshvon. So um, we see that, that the, they believe that the flood, the rabbis believe that the flood occurred during this month, and it is they liken it to a mikvah, which is uh, precedes the coming of Messiah. It is the eighth month, and that is considered to be by them the month of Messiah. The number eight, as you probably know, is the month of um, the month of the extra. 
beyond the fulfillment of perfection in the seventh month, we have something extra that comes in the eighth month. And eight is considered to be one of the numbers for Messiah. So they may be expecting that after all this purification uh, signified by um, Yom Tru'ah and Yom HaKippurim and Sukkot, and also as shown by the purification, uh, the mikvah of the flood of Noah's time, that after all this, that's an appropriate time for Messiah to come. Now the astronomical sign for the month of Cheshvan, uh, for the eighth month, is Scorpio. And uh, that might seem a little anomalous. Let's look into it. So the Hebrew word for scorpion is akrav, Deuteronomy 8.15, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. 1 Kings 12.11, and now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, and I will add to your yoke, my father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the scorpion is always associated with something negative, with pain, with the desert, with uh, evil. Um, the second scripture there is from Rehoboam. Uh, Solomon's son made a foolish decision to try and uh, ha rule with a heavier hand even than Solomon. So very clearly it has a negative uh, and painful perhaps connotation. The word akrav comes from these two roots, uh, ekev, which means heal. You know from the name of Yaakov, from Jacob's name, that he was considered to be the heel grabber. And from akar, which uh, can mean lame and it can also mean to uproot. So specifically, a car we see in Ecclesiastes 3.2, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Now it has this one uh, related root. The idea from the tree again is that the tree is rooted, but we see again associated with the month of Bool where we looked at Bool as being the stock of the tree a car is translated in a similar manner in Leviticus 25 47 and if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee and thy brother that dwelleth with by him wax poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the strangers family in other words he is going to be moving into the tree, if you will, by the root coming to the center part of that tree as part of a stranger's family in an effort to get himself out of debt. The similarity also has been pointed out uh, from a crab, the scorpion, to crab, which is uh, translated as battle or war. Psalm 55:21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Also in Zechariah 14:3. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Uh, you probably are familiar with the uh, Israeli martial arts, which is called Krav Maga. The krav is from this word, the battle, maga, is, has to do with touching, is contact, combat. We're going to see what this uh, combat is in a moment. In Greek, of course, the name is Scorpios, uh, and we see the same thing in Revelation 9.5, that they are uh, evil and painful. A scorpion sting can kill a small child or maybe an older person, probably not an adult, but in any event, uh, I'm sure it's painful. I'm happy never to have uh, experienced one. Revelation 9, 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Clearly not pleasant. Luke 10, 19. 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so now we come in to the full understanding of why Scorpio is going to be associated with the eighth month. In every picture of a full star map that you see, you will see a constellation called Ophiochus and that is a man he is holding he is containing the snake the serpents there's a constellation called serpent we won't be discussing either of those because they're not on the ecliptic but they are definitely part of this picture of Scorpio Ophiochus is always standing on the head of the scorpion so there is this picture the man, the person that controls the snake, I'm sure you get the picture, he is also stepping on the scorpion. Within the mythology of Scorpio, uh, he is said to have killed Orion, the hunter. So in this picture, we see the fulfillment of the prophecy uh, in Genesis 3 that the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Yes, it's a serpent, but the picture is applicable. And the, the serpent, or in this case a scorpion, shall bruise the heel of what will be the Messiah. So in fact, we see in 1 Corinthians 15:52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. When is the last trump? The last trump is at the closing of the services in Yom HaKippurim. At the, uh, there's a service called Ne'ilah, it means the closing, the closing of the gates. And uh, at this time, the judgment, is pictures that the judgment is being finished, uh, possibly sealed or enacted into the end of the month but at the end of the seventh month we see the last trump continuing in 1st Corinthians 15 54 so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting where is the scorpion? He is under the heel of Messiah. O grave, where is thy victory? The last enemy death is abolished. So we have this eighth month, and there's a picture of uh, the, uh, the gathering of the fruit of the seventh month, and then the people in the eighth month going out and taking the fruit, the light of the word, the good word, into the world it is the month of messiah when he comes and puts an end to the sting of death and the victory of the grave we wish you a happy cheshvan a happy eighth month uh, pray that your time in the lord will be fruitful until he returns to seem at ha'inayim al hashamayim keep your eye on the sky your redemption draweth nigh shalom <music>